Hi there, I'm Ryan, one of the support engineers here at Woopra. In this video, I'll be covering how to use our new journey reports. So quickly, what are journey reports and what questions can they answer? Well, journey reports are used to map end-to-end -end touch points and paths that the user can take. We can answer questions like, which campaigns are driving the most conversions? Where are visitors dropping off when browsing through your site? Or even how many users are adding items to a cart but aren't checking out? All of these questions and more can be answered with our journey reports. So let's get started and we'll jump into creating the report. I can create a new journey report by clicking the Analyze tab, New Report, and then Journeys. First, I'll name this report Whooper version and support requests. In this report, I want to examine the user's journey from when they log in to product usage, and finally, what support are they seeking? Knowing this information can give us insight into what improvements we need to make regarding UX design, features, documentation, and support. So now that we have a plan of what to build, I'll go through the various parts of the report configurations. I'll go ahead and select the time frame for the last 30 days, and this is going to select all the users that have done at least one action in the last 30 days. So in other words, all the active users in that time frame. From there, we have the perform by. This is the segment or group of people that we want to analyze. There are two ways of creating segments. One way is to create reusable segments found in the segment section under the configurations tab. Configuring them here, we don't have to configure the segments every time when making new reports. The other way is to simply create the segments in the reports themselves in the perform by section. When creating segments, we can filter these users based on certain actions, locations, or visitor properties. For example, say we only want to build a report on registered users from the United States. To do this, I'll add a filter and type an email since they need an email to register. And once selected, I'll add a constraint where email exists. Next, I can add another filter where I'll select the country. Again, I'll select the filter, which is country, and put the constraint as contains United States. For more details on our segments, I'll link to our documentation in our video's description. Next, we have the steps. These are the sequential steps that our user will take that they want to analyze. The first step will determine the initial pool of people for the rest of the journey. When we open this up, we can first select the color and name the step. I'll label this step as dashboard since this is where our journey is going to be starting. Next, we can either choose fixed or dynamic paths. Choosing fixed allows me to manually define each alternative path, while dynamic will automatically generate the list for me. For now, I'll just keep this on fixed. The action that I'll analyze for this step will be our web view event. I'll further filter this action by adding a constraint where the product exists. We can also further define the step in the aggregation. By default, this will be by the count of actions of at least one. This will look for the selected action in the person's profile, and it needs to be there at least one time. The other options are count of visit, sum of action duration, or sum of another numeric property like sum of amounts. But I'll just keep this as a default aggregation and click apply. For the next step, I want to know if users are either using our old version or our new version of Woopra. First, I'll pick a color and label this as new version. Again, I'll select a web view, but this time I'm going to define the version in the constraint. I want to select our versions where they start with 12 or 13, so I'll go ahead and enter that into the constraints. I'll click apply, and now I want to add a parallel step for the other version. I'll hit the plus, label this as old version, and again, I'll select the web view, and this time I want to show only versions that start with 11. I'll hit enter, click apply, and now I have my two versions in a parallel step. Since I'm selecting fixed paths, I was defining manually each version in the parallel steps. So what if I don't want to manually create these paths? Well, this is where our dynamic paths come in. To demonstrate this, first I'll add another step, pick a color, and I'll label this as ran report. For this action, I'm going to select when a user runs a report, and I'm going to select a dynamic path. For the constraint, I want to exclude search, so I'll type where the report does not contain search. Next, I want to select the breakdown, 
and I want this to be broken down by the various report types. Once I click apply and run the report, you can now see what the dynamic step is doing. I can now see the top three reports users are running along with the rest bucketed in other. Since I selected a dynamic path, I didn't need to manually define the reports since I wanted to discover what the most ran reports were. Dynamic steps are great for a little bit of discovery if you don't want to list out all the paths manually. So next we're going to look at optional steps. So far, all of our steps have been required steps, meaning that the user has to do these steps before moving on to the next step. To create an optional step, I'll go ahead and click the plus, select a color, and I'll label this as search. I want to see if users are using the search functionality after they run a report. I'll keep this step on fixed, and again, I'm going to select the action as ran report. For the constraint, I'll put the report type as contains search. I'll just keep the default aggregation and click apply. Lastly, I'm going to click the button next to the step to make it optional. This means that the user does not need to complete the step before moving on to the next one. Optional steps are great if your user doesn't need to complete a specific step in order to move on to some other step. This can be things like adding a promo code before a cart checkout. Since the user isn't required to enter a promo code, this would be considered an optional step. Perfect, so now that we have this optional step, I'm going to see if users had any issues by examining if they submitted a support ticket or viewed our documentation. Again, I'll add a step, select a color, and label this as new support ticket. For the action, I'll just select support ticket and leave the rest as the default settings. Once I click apply, I'll add another parallel step and label this as viewed docs and the action will be viewed documentation and hit apply. For the last two steps, I want to add an additional support ticket to see if users submitted a ticket after viewing the documentation. Lastly, I'll go ahead and add a solve ticket step. This is to let me know if the tickets that were submitted were resolved. One thing about journeys is that you might want to narrow down the focus of the report. While being broad can give you a general overview of what users are doing, this can sometimes lead to what we call as a spaghetti chart. Basically, it becomes a chart that has so many paths that it makes it difficult to read. So it's often better to split journey reports into sections of specific areas you want to analyze. So the last component of the journey is going to be the compare by. These are the columns that you want to add to the chart below the journey report. We can select any combination of cohorts, action properties associated with the first step, system properties, visitor properties, dynamic fields, or visit properties. For our example, I'll just select the cohort of dates. Now if we click run, we can see our final journey report. We can easily see now a complete journey that our users are taking during the paths that we laid out. There's also some additional functionality like drill downs. This is really useful if we want to see specific numbers in any given step. We can click the paths or steps to see how many people there are. We can also click on these users to view a people report that we can then export. Lastly, if you click the ellipsis or the three dots, there are some additional options for exporting and sharing. We can export the journey report as a PDF or CSV, and we can also generate a snapshot of the report. When you create a snapshot, this is going to generate a link to the report that others can view even if they aren't registered with Woopra. Just to note, when you create a snapshot, this is going to be taken of the report at that point in time. So any changes that you make to the report will not be reflected in the snapshot you took. The next option is share. It's really important you share your report to the correct teams. If you don't share this report with anyone, only the creator can see it. You can also tag or pin the report to the dashboard along with duplicating, reloading, or deleting the report. So that does it for our journey report tutorial. I'll link to our journey documentation as well in the video's description. And if you have any questions, you can contact us at support at Thanks.